Welcome to another edition of Throw Forward Thursday, where we jump into the future and see what's going on. Uh, today is probably not a surprise because we are talking about virtual reality. Of course, yes, virtual reality where you use one of these virtual reality headsets. This is just an El Cheapo, cost me a few dollars, a nice plastic thing where the uh, phone becomes the processor behind it. Uh, but of course, uh, good proper virtual reality that gives you a full immersive experience uh, is just getting better and better from probably the Oculus Rift giving us the, the best option. Uh, and now you've got Microsoft, Apple talking about coming into this. This certainly is the way of the future. So why, why a throw forward Thursday on this one? Because we already know that virtual reality is coming. Well, the throw forward with this one is about going back to the office. What happens if going back to the office after lockdown is not about going back to any office at all. What happens if the office of the future is no office? And by that I mean what happens if the office of the future is actually in virtual reality? I don't think that will happen in the near future. I don't think that that is the immediate response to COVID. So we're throwing forward maybe a decade or two here. But there are already a lot of industries that are using virtual reality on a regular basis. Uh, a construction company that we know uses virtual reality to test out people's fear of heights before putting them up on a construction site on top of a high building or a crane. Uh, it, wouldn't it be better to know if somebody does have a crippling fear of heights by using a virtual experience rather than trying it out in real life where it could be quite dangerous? Uh, we have a mining company that uses it to help people deal with experiencing a crisis underground in their mind. Again, doing it in a simulated uh, way that gives you all of the real feelings and experience. It's a virtual reality experience, but without any of, of the danger. And what you do is you get to see how you react and respond. We know a training company who has been using virtual reality experiences to put teams into stressful environments and test how the teams respond and react under uh, situations of deep stress. And <clears throat> that might feel like something where you think, well, why would you do that? Well, the answer is, of course, to work out whether the team is going to be resilient and responsive to change and adaptive and how they engage. When you put people in a pressure cooker, you can do things in an hour or two that otherwise might take a few weeks and months to unfold in the team dynamics. And the list goes on and on. We are seeing tourism companies using virtual reality to attract tourists during the COVID period when they are not able to go in person uh, and visit something. Now virtual reality gives you a fully immersive experience. So in industry after industry, uh, we are beginning to see virtual reality uh, find use cases. And it's no longer just toys and games. It's no longer just simulated experiences. I mean, probably the industry that's doing the most with it, that's beyond just a simulation, uh, is of course property developers who instead of now building uh, models, <laughs> spending, I've got a friend who's an architect and he's spent half his life building uh, scaled models of the buildings that he is trying to get his clients to approve. Um, he now spends time building virtual reality walkthroughs that are much better better, much more immersive. So we know that this is coming to an industry near you, uh, motor industry, airlines, the list goes on and on and on. But for us, for you and me, the most likely use of virtual reality in the future, let's call it sometime in the 2030s, 
is going to be our ability to connect with other people, our ability to replace what most of us are feeling we're missing in the office, which is that direct, physical, face-to-face -face connection with other people, where you can just turn and talk to somebody, where you feel the physical presence of, of somebody else, where you can be in the room. Well, virtual reality gives us the opportunity to do that and probably creates for us the best of both worlds. Uh, we don't actually have to get into rush hour traffic. We don't actually have to schlep ourselves into the inner city to get to an office, which probably isn't quite set up optimally for us anyway. But through virtual reality, we can have the connection that we are missing by not being in the same room as other people. And this will obviously impact the office, it'll impact meetings, it'll impact conferences, exhibitions and events, uh, and all the things that I spend most of my life uh, engaging with. Throw Forward Thursday, virtual reality is coming, it is already here, but as we throw ourselves into the future, we will discover more and more uses of it until all of us just don't consider it virtual reality. It's part of our real reality sometime in the future. Make sure that you subscribe. If you are watching us on YouTube, click the notification bell button so that every Thursday you're reminded to join us in the future. If you're listening to the podcast version, make sure that you share this with your friends and subscribe on your favorite podcast platform. Maybe even rate us as well. That'd be useful. I'll see you next week with another glimpse into the future.